Hello friends, this is Sumit K. In this video, I will be talking about traffic inspection using AWS Gateway Load Balancer GWLB. Uh, we will see what is Gateway Load Balancer and we will also cover how to inspect traffic, uh, whether it could be a east west traffic, it could be a north south traffic, and how we can inspect those traffic using the Gateway Load Balancer approach. So, Gateway Load Balancer. Um, is the service which i think uh, was introduced back uh, i think two or two, two or three years back and um, the idea of uh, using uh, bringing the gateway load balancer is to centralize uh, your security inspection using your you know appliance or firewall appliance uh, using this gateway load load balancer so we will see uh, from this scratch what is gateway, gateway load load balancer okay so let's get started uh, so before i talk about gateway load balancer i assume that uh, uh, you should have a fair understanding uh, not fair understanding but a very good understanding of uh, uh, of aws networking construct uh, which includes virtual private cloud and cider range so you should have a very basic understanding or very good understanding of how to configure the vpc what are the cider range how to configure the cider range and ips all this uh, what are the subnets um, because we know that subnets are uh, zonal in nature in the aws so we need to understand how we um, configure subnets uh, if we are using multi availability zone and uh, route table is very important this is very important when it comes to gateway load balancer because uh, the route table decides how the packets or your, your traffic should flow uh, from one point to another point and finally to the uh, to your security appliance right where uh, your gateway load balancer is deployed and behind the gateway load balancer there are firewall appliance okay we will see that internet gateway uh, again now uh, it's if anything any um, if you want to talk to internet uh, you should you should be reaching by the internet gateway nat gateway is for uh, is for the uh, nat again it's for uh, uh, if you want to if your private subnets uh, workloads uh, which are in the private subnets wants to communicate with the internet then you should be using the nat gateway nat gateway is using the um, uh, network translations on behalf of your uh, workloads and they do the communication on on your on your behalf right so nat gateway is also very important vpc endpoint uh, is again a very important uh, key point or or term when it comes to the gateway load balancer because this is the um, this is the point uh, or this is a service that uh, is used uh, for connecting your workloads uh, you know uh, to to send the traffic to the gateway load load balancer so if you have already used how to how or what is uh, uh, you know how to use the vpc endpoint to talk to the s3 uh, then you should be either then uh, you you should be familiar with the uh, with this endpoint load balancer you should have a good understanding of the load balancer uh, transit gateway so transit gateway is also very important uh, because uh, transit gateway is something that is used to connect all your network it's it act like a uh, transitive in nature uh, it acts like a central hub router uh, where all your uh, vpcs uh, can be connected or you can also terminate any uh, you know your vpn connection direct connect and and there are many modes right so it act like a um, central hub router um firewall is also very important um because uh, you need to have a very good understanding uh, and i'm talking about the native firewall huh? so we have a knuckle we have a sg so uh, means uh, there are the, one of them is stateless and one of them is stateful so you need to understand that that uh, uh, knuckle uh, operates at the subnet level and control inbound and outbound traffic for your vpc and they are stateless meaning they are they basically evaluate each packet independently without considering the state of the connections so that that is very important huh? and um, uh, for security group i uh, act as a fire uh, virtual firewall for your ec2 instances 
to control inbound and outbound traffic <laughs> so they are stateful meaning uh, if you if you allow inbound inbound traffic on the port the return traffic is automatically allowed so that is the big difference right so you, you have a you should know the difference between the NACL and security group and of, of course um, since we are dealing with the third party appliance like like Palo Alto uh, checkpoint Fortinet and many more so you should have a very basic understanding of how firewall appliance works and uh, how uh, they are useful for traffic inspection because this is where uh, we are going to talking about uh, a lot um, how because these third firewall appliance are act as a firewall inspection behind your state uh, your gateway load balancer right so we will see that so um, these are the basic construct that you should have a very good understanding um, of yeah, when you are dealing with a uh, security or um, you're know, dealing with the east west traffic inspections north south traffic inspections right so uh, if you don't know what is east west traffic inspection is basically uh, east west traffic inspection is something uh, within the organizations right so when when you are uh, when your packets are moving from one network to another network but in your organization boundary right and when we say north south it means that the traffic is going to internet or coming from the internet so like that so for example north south in ingress when the traffic is coming from the internet uh, from your application load balancer to load balancer to your um, to your uh, network right so that's called north south uh, 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 ingress similarly for the egress right Okay, so why traffic uh, inspection is required? Um, the first thing is, uh, of course, protects against threats. So it helps detect and block malicious activities such as malware or unauthorized access. Uh, compliance, uh, because it ensures that data handling and this communication uh, meeting the industry standards and their regulations. And of course, last is very important visibility and control. So it provides you insight into your network traffic and allowing you a better control over how data moves within and outside uh, of the cloud. So <clears throat> these three um, items are very important when you are considering traffic inspection, right? Now it comes to uh, AWS Gateway Load Balancer. So Choose a gateway load balancer when you need to deploy a and manage a fleet of third-party virtual appliance that support Genevi. And, and these appliance enables you to improve security compliance and security control. Okay, so gateway load balancer act as a different type of load balancer, and it is designed to insert third-party network function into the into the traffic flow, right? and gateway load balancer first route the traffic through the third party security service so this is very important huh? let me just highlight it yeah so third party so this is very important third party security service so traffic has to route to the third party security service for inspection including intrusion detection and prevention before sending the traffic to the destination application. So whatever traffic um, that is coming to your workloads, to internet, from internet, it has to route to the third party security services before they it actually reaches to the final destinations, right? So this is very important. It provides a single entry and exit point for all your traffic, allowing central air control and monitoring through the unified interface. Again, single entry and single exit so uh, whatever traffic is coming the, the 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 first point of entry would be your third party security appliance or gateway load balancer and the exit is also going to be your gateway load balancer <clears throat> okay so the protocol used by the gateway load balancer is genevi which uh, stands for generic network virtualization encapsulation and the port that that it used is 6081 and which supports target group like ec2 instance or ip address so I'll, I'll i'll show you the architecture 
okay so this is the terminology um uh, which that uh, gateway load balancer use so gateway load balancer again it's it's a managed service from the aws you don't need to configure it. you just need to simply um the way that the way you used to deploy your uh, normal load balancer it's it is like a similar way you can deploy the gateway uh, load balancer right <clears throat> but gateway load balancer is 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 not typical is not like a typical load balancer right uh, you can't use for uh, internet facing application or like that it's just used for this particular use case okay so gateway load balancer enables client to create and maintain multiple inline virtual network appliance uh, and you can scale it right so uh, when i say virtual network appliance it could be your firewall appliance it could be your data analytics appliance like like anything right so most of the time we use security uh, firewall appliance like ips or ids uh, you can think of like checkpoint or palo alto fortinet kind of device uh, which you which most of the organizations is already using in the aws or in in any other clouds right this gateway load balancer it operate at the third layer of the osi model right so, so what is the third layer i think is the ip layer so it work both for uh, the ip layer and l3 and l4 both layer it 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 operates okay it listens all the ip packets on all the ports and send traffic to the listener soul def defined in the target group right so we will we'll see that okay now these last three points are very important uh, because gateway load balancer has a unique component and that's call it gateway load balancer endpoint this is very important right because this is the uh, service or this is the uh, component that solves uh, this this entire problems uh, all right and it is the data plane component of gateway load balancer and it provides a way for the customer to flexibly uh, flexibly place interface vpc endpoint in both centralized and distributed deployment so uh, so basically what happens that um, the endpoints are nothing it's like a private interface which will be given to the consumer and the consumer will be using this endpoint and the endpoint <coughs> will uh, you know uh, will route the traffic will will route the traffic to the intended destinations uh, which is here uh, is the firewall appliance okay so i i i will cover this how this gateway load balancer endpoint works now gateway load balancer endpoint is like a aws private link which i already told which allow you to place your service across many accounts and vpc without losing the centralized controls and administrations right so you can place your um, endpoint uh, uh, in a in a consumer account or maybe in a uh service provider account it's it's up to you right it's up to the use case uh gateway load lead balancer endpoint is a vpc endpoint that allow virtual appliance <coughs> in the service provider vpc to communicate with the application server in the service consumer vpc right like like i said so it's like a vpc endpoint so if so what is vpc endpoint uh, vpc endpoints are nothing right it's uh if let's say uh, your your workloads wants to communicate with the s3 using the vpc3 vpc uh, uh, endpoint so what do you generally do you configure the vpc endpoint and then <clears throat> and then you point it to your s3 and when any workloads from your vpc wants to communicate to s3 and the traffic will not go over to the internet rather it go it it takes uh, it go to the uh, vpc endpoint or private uh, link and it will remain in your aws private network so the traffic is not leaving your vpc network so it is within your uh, within your aws network so so that that's secure right that brings a, a security because your traffic is not hopping over to the internet and that's exactly uh, uh the it works when it comes to the gateway load balancer i hope it makes sense huh? so before gateway load balancer how do we use our centralized network uh, firewall appliance uh, so we have a security vpc and in security vpc this is the the, the first 
so basically we have a security account and then we have two vpcs in the security account the first security is a security ingress vpc and the other one is security egress vpc and in both vpc i have a some um, some uh, firewall appliance deployed and the traffic is coming from the internet and then the traffic is hitting from the uh, checkpoint firewall or maybe any 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 firewall and then from firewall uh, the traffic is getting your packet is in inspection um, process, pro, uh, processed here and then after the process is done your traffic based on the rules and all this thing if uh, if the rules doesn't violate then it passes uh, and move forward and um, forward it uh, forward it to your backend instance like this is how it works and similarly for the, uh, for in the egress uh, that uh, for the workload sends the traffic and then it go to the uh, your firewall appliance and then um, the traffic will send it over to the internet right so here the the the, the, the problem with this with this approach is like there are a lot of uh, you know um manual work like uh, uh, what uh, what if you wanted all the network traffic to be inspected first um, before being sent to your application so you must deploy uh, you know uh, third party virtual appliance and then um, uh, sometime what happened that these virtual appliance uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, work as an active passive way so it's very difficult to maintain the route table and and the scalability is also a challenge so those type of things um, are the problems uh, uh, be, before the gateway load balancer was introduced uh, uh, so th this is how uh, this these uh, problems we are going to solve it uh, using the gate payload balancer okay so gateway load balancer um, uh, basically uh, used to implement intrusion detection and prevention system and deep packet inspections so uh, to get started uh, one must create a gateway load balancer uh, what is going to happen is that behind the scene route table has to be updated in the vpc right and uh, as a result the route table have been altered and now what happened is that the user traffic must go through the gateway load balancer and the gateway load balancer will then will then spread that traffic towards the target of your virtual appliance so here in you can see that you have a service provider vpc and on the, on the left hand side i have a uh, service consumer vpc so this application is going to consume <coughs> consume uh, the security appliance so what happens that whenever a traffic uh, coming from the internet which is to internet gateway it first goes to the gateway load balancer endpoint so this is the endpoint that, that i was talking about and this endpoint uh, will not forward the traffic to directly to the application it will first forward this traffic to the gateway load balancer and the gateway load balancer will forward the traffic to the security appliance and the security appliance will process all those um, all those packets and traffic and uh, and verify that uh, there is no malicious or threats uh, included and once everything is clean and then it will send it back to the gateway load balancer and the gateway load balancer will send it back to the uh, endpoint and depending on the route table you have defined here the load uh, the the endpoint will send it back to the application load balancer so in this way you are getting a neat and clean packets um, i mean your packets are being um, being verified um, is getting inspected in via the security appliance and reaching uh, to the final destinations and in similar way uh, if i say for egress traffic um, the application is initializing the traffic uh, and it first goes to the gateway load balancer endpoint because i said that endpoint can be placed in service consumer vpc or it can be placed in a service service provider vpc the ultimate um, you know uh, destinations of application traffic is going to be the gateway load balancer endpoint always and it's a gateway load balancer responsibilities to take care of um, traffic inspections moving from here mo mo moving the traffic to gateway load balancer 
to apply and then, then send it back to the um, you know internet right so this is how it this work in a nutshell uh, we will see the actual uh, architecture in a coming slides so don't worry about that okay so uh, gateway load balancer endpoint or VPC endpoint this is how it works so when the traffic reaches to your endpoint so this is the endpoint in availability zone a and this is the endpoint 2 in in next availability zone so if a user workloads is sending a traffic from availability zone uh, uh, no, 1a or a to this endpoint 1 what happened that um, it's 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 a private link right endpoint is nothing it's a private link so you create an endpoint service the endpoint service uh, is basically um, a service which will be attached to your gateway load balancer so so in order to reach your gateway load balancer you will create an endpoint service Sim in the similar way that you create a endpoint service for s3 basically we don't create an endpoint service for s3 it's already built in uh, but for any customization you can always create an endpoint service so it's like that it's 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 a similar service right um, the only difference that you have created for your load balancer attached to it so you send the traffic to endpoint endpoint will know that i have to send the traffic to this endpoint service the endpoint service attached to the low the gateway load balancer now gateway load balancer knows that that it uh, that uh, behind that uh, in the target group there are firewall appliance and the gateway load balancer using the Genevi protocol we send the traffic to the firewall appliance firewall appliance will do all the processing and everything and it does send back to the gateway load balancer and the traffic get back to the end end point so this is how it works uh, when the traffic lands to your end point right so end point is nothing it's a private lane from here your traffic is uh, basically um, talking to gateway load balancer internally on the AWS network not hopping onto the internet right it's not hopping onto the internet it's internally uh, sending the traffic I hope it makes sense so let's move forward <coughs> okay um, benefits of uh, gateway load balancer um, so the first is the GenV protocol, uh, GenEv protocol, is used by the gateway load balancer and its registered virtual appliance instance to exchange the application traffic on the port 6081. Uh, 6081. So gateway load balancer used this protocol and um, the virtual appliance instance. Whatever traffic that been exchanged between virtual appliance and the gateway load balancer, everything is been carried out with this GenV protocol. And the port that uh, th this used is 6081, right? It provides horizontal scaling and fault tolerance to the appliance. So you can scale your virtual appliance horizontally. You can scale it, and it also brings uh, a fault tolerance. If something goes, uh, uh, if something happens to your appliance, it uh, you know it can scale it, and it can also fault tolerate it. It is a transparent to network traffic as there is no changes to source traffic, right? It doesn't change any source traffic. So it's basically encapsulate uh, on your packets. It's basically add an extra header and encapsulate on your traffic and send it as it is to the virtual appliance. Now it separates security and user admin domain shared across different VPC and the AWS account. So uh, you can have your security account uh, isolated and you have a um, admin domain shared across different VPCs and the AWS account with your business line into the different AWS account and you can share it using the <coughs> gateway load, load, load balancer, right? It provides the appliance as a service facility yes it's i will say that it you can you can also say that it's i say um firewall as a service or appliance as a service that you can um, offer it for to your customers as well or or your partners like that uh, if your partners are within the with operating within the aws so you can you can offer your services like that 
uh, you just customer or the partner you just needs to send the traffic to, to, to the endpoints and that's it <clears throat> so use case I told you that uh, that the gateway load balancer uh, mostly used to inspect um, the traffic uh, is uh, north south inspections so it's basically VPC 2 from internet using the internet gateway or north south inspection using the transit gateway east west traffic inspection using the transit gateway so we'll see that all those traffic use case and um, deploying the third party appliance is become faster uh, you can scale your virtual appliance while managing the cost and you can improve the virtual appliance availability right so all this use case uh, that you can um, uh, cover using when you use the gateway load balancer so this is uh, the comparison of uh, your gateway load balancer application load balancer network load balancer and gateway load balancer so you can see their application load balancer is layer 7 network load balancer is a layer 4 but gateway load balancer is a combination of layer 3 and layer 4 right um, see here is the target type right um, so the terminate uh, flow proxy yeah it terminates uh, all your you know it's like work as a proxy it also work as a proxy but it doesn't work as a proxy right it's, it's basically a simple gateway load balancer it's not a user facing uh, it uses the protocol http https grp grpc uh, but uh, the gateway load balancer use the ip protocol and um, this is the main i would say uh, important difference that application and network load balancer use the virtual ip we call it wip but gateway load balancer use the route table enter this is very important important that's why uh, at the beginning of this uh, slide i said route table is very important and play a very crucial role when it comes to moving the packets from your uh, from source to the security appliance so route table plays a very important role because the route table decides how to send the traffic to the gateway towards the gateway load balancer and that's very important okay so this is one of the, the security comparison uh, i'm not gonna cover this one okay okay so this is the architecture diagram of gateway load balancer when you are dealing with a with multiple accounts uh, and uh, when you are dealing with the aws organization <clears throat> so here if you look at this design um, this is uh, the production account and this is where i have deployed my workloads and here i have two vpcs uh, we call it as spoke spoke one and spoke to vpc so spoke vpcs uh, that uh, need their network traffic <coughs> um, uh, inspected are connected to the transit gateway using a vpc attachment so in in each availability zone spoke vpc consists of two subnets you can see there are two subnets app subnets and uh, we have a, a tgw subnet which we call a transit gateway subnet and uh, <coughs> Um, these spoke VPC have the uh, default route uh, which you can see here uh, uh, the route is going to the transit gateway and for local uh, then the next hook is going to the local VPC right so let me explain this again uh, this is my production account and this is my <laughs> security VPC uh, security account so in security account uh, we have um, our you know uh, appliances are running basically this let's consider that this is a firewall appliance uh, let's say this is a checkpoint firewall appliance running behind the gateway load balancer the gateway load balancer uh, uh, is deployed and it is targeting to your firewall appliance as a target group right and um, <clears throat> this gateway uh, global not global it's a gateway load balancer endpoint is also created here uh, which we will cover cover it later uh, basically uh, uh, to to accept the traffic uh, right from your production environment and this is the NAT gateway in both the availability zone 
to send out the traffic to to the internet right so i am i'm taking a two two zone two availability zone and um, and you will see the traffic how the traffic flow from uh, from your workloads towards the internet right so again coming back to the production environment i have two vpc spoke one and spoke two uh, in in both the vpc i have some workloads are running it could be anything right it can be database it can be your middleware application web application whatever application right so <clears throat> this is a typical it's a very typical architecture or no a real world architecture you can say that uh, and now we will we want to inspect the traffic right so the first first inspection is that uh, uh, north south traffic of of uh, of egress right so let's say um, your workloads wants to communicate to the internet right so uh, let's first understand right i i told you that um, uh, each uh, spoke has two uh, each vpc has two availability zone we have two subnets in each availability zone and we have workloads running in all those subnets application subnets and uh, <clears throat> uh, we have a transit gateway here so transit gateway is used to attach your spoke vpc it's act like a uh, central hub router so your both the vpcs are attached to this at uh, uh, to this um, the transit gateway and your security vpcs also attached to this transit gateway so which means all these networks are interconnected now right so the connectivity solution has been has been uh, provided by the transit gateway now <clears throat> Here, uh, if you look at here, uh, you have a route table. It's a uh, network level route table, and the default uh, route is saying if you want to go to internet, you, you're gonna go with the transit gateway ID. So this is the transit gateway ID you're gonna put in the private route table. If you don't put it, uh, uh, your workloads or your packets when workloads try your workloads try to send the traffic to the internet, it will never know uh, where to route the traffic. So you have to provide this, right? <coughs> then you at the transit uh, gateway you have a egress route table which is associated with this spoke vpc so egress route table have the default route with the appliance vpc attachment uh, as the next home and then you have a transit route table associated with the um, with the uh, with this appliance vpc um, <clears throat> basically transit route table have the routes for the spoke vpc network address with appropriate spoke vpc attachment right and then uh, come back you have uh, here you have a gateway load balancer endpoint gateway load balancer and virtual appliance and NAT gateways are deployed in a centralized appliance VPC which is connected to your transit gateway using the VPC attachment right now appliance VPC in each of your availability zone is consist of transit gateway subnets associated with the transit gateway route table right uh, for for the transit gateway attachment so this is a transit gateway subnet right <clears throat> and uh, appliance subnets associated this is the appliance subnet or application uh, subnet you can say that is basically uh, associated with the application route table for your gateway load balancer endpoint gateway load balancer and virtual appliance then you have a NAT, uh, NAT gateway uh, subnet associated with the NAT gateway route table for your NAT gateway. So we have three route tables. The first route table is for the transit gateway subnet. The, uh, the second route table is is associated with your application uh, or uh, you know subnet or appliance subnet, uh, uh, and your NAT gateway route table is associated with the NAT subnet. Similarly, in the in the uh, second availability zone, right? So we first need to understand that uh, uh, how what are the resources uh, uh, are deployed and what are the route tables are associated right now we are going to see um, uh, when we send a traffic from your workload uh, to the internet okay so your workload here is sending the traffic to where to internet so what happened uh, workload in your spoke one vpc let's say wants to communicate with the with, with the internet the application use the default route uh, which is uh, towards the transit gateway id and then what happens that the, the your traffic will reach here uh, using the attachment it will come here and um, 
now your you now your uh, you know that your spoke one vpc this vpc is attached or associated with your egress route table so the transit gateway use a default route in egress route table to send the traffic to the appliance vpc right and this is what we exactly want we want whatever traffic that your workloads send the packets it first goes to your appliance vpc right which is this vpc so it go via this particular route table now appliance vpc <coughs> um transit gateway i mean the, when the traffic will come here now this part starts right in the appliance vpc uh, transit gateway uh, sorry transit uh, uh, gateway subnet this transit gateway subnet use the default route in um, uh, here to send the traffic to where to the vpc endpoint or we can also say gateway load balancer endpoint right if if you look at here um, you will see that it's gateway load balancer endpoint and here i have mentioned vpc endpoint so it makes it makes no difference okay uh, if i say gateway load balancer endpoint or vpc endpoint it's just same right so it just it's the vpc endpoint you can you can treat like that right so when the traffic comes reaches here it see the route table of your transit gateway subnets in availability zone one and it will see that okay uh, if i if i you want to go to internet uh, you have to first report to vpc endpoint so the traffic will reach to the vpc endpoint and that's where the uh the gateway load balancer works get started right so pay attention here huh? now what happened when the traffic reaches here gateway uh load balancer um endpoint a because it's, it's in availability zone a um <clears throat> uses the aws um private link and it routes the traffic to the gateway load balancer okay and uh, the traffic is routed securely over amazon network without any additional configuration right and this is exactly what the role of endpoint endpoints are nothing it's like a private uh, link or uh, what we say private tunnel you can you can think about right it's like a uh, private roads uh for you specifically designed for for the vip peoples uh you know sometimes you go to uh, some important place and uh, uh, there is a vip treatment given to the vip people so it's like a vip uh routes or vip uh tunnels uh, for for the only for the people for the for the vip people who can who can <coughs> who can use these uh, roads and talk to the uh, resources right so um now when the traffic reaches to the gateway load balancer so gateway load balancer uses five tuples or three tuples of an ip packets to pick an appliance for the life of that flow now this creates session stickiness to it so if you don't know what is five tuple or three tuple so five tuple is basically um, uh, you know that uh, five tuple means uh, source um, address destination address uh, source protocol destination protocol uh sorry source uh, ip destination ip source port destination port and protocol this five uh, component <coughs> uh, makes a uh, five tuple and in three tuple it's like source ip destination ip and the protocol so five tuple used for uh, detailed traffic inspection uh, like the, the firewall rules and security and security uh, policies where specific ports and protocols needs to be identified <coughs> When is three tuple uh, used in the scenario where basic uh, you know, um, endpoint identification is sufficient, right? <clears throat> so when the traffic here, um, so gateway load balancer use these five tuple and three tuples of your IP IP packets, and this creates a session stickiness towards your appliance um, uh, for a flow of uh, uh, you know required for a stateful appliance like firewalls. So this is this is required, right? Uh, it maintains the stickiness of your uh, traffic now when gateway load balancer what happens here that the gateway load balancer encapsulate your original ip traffic with the genway header because this load balancer use the uh, genway uh, protocol uh, and uh, uh, it, it then uh, in, encapsulate your the original traffic with this header and it forward it to the appliance on the port 
on UDP port, right? And this particular encapsulation allow all the IP traffic uh, to be delivered to the appliance for the inspections, right? And then what happened uh, once uh, the traffic reaches here in the firewall appliance? Uh, the the firewall appliance um, uh, behind your gateway load balancer decapsulates the Genova header, which was given by the gateway load balancer, um, and makes the decision to allow the traffic. Uh, or deny the traffic based on the security policy that you have configured here, right? So I don't know how to configure the policy, but whatever uh, uh, policy that you have configured based on that rules, uh, it will deny or allow the traffic further. Now, once the inspection process has been done, the virtual appliance then re encapsulate the traffic and forward back to the global uh, gateway load balancer, <coughs> right? And the gateway load balancer. Um, now remove all those headers and all those uh, works and then forward the traffic to the uh, uh, your VPC endpoint or gateway load balancer endpoint, right? So you can think of right. There are a lot of things are happening between them. The traffic is coming to you know endpoint, load balancer, appliance, then back to load balancer, then back to endpoint. So so many hopes are happening here, right? And um, once the traffic reaches from gateway load balancer to the gateway endpoint, the gateway endpoint is also uh, deployed in the, you know, is, is looking for the route table or the application route table or appliance route table. And uh, it see that uh, uh, the traffic is looking for the internet. So the next hook is going to the NAT gateway. So it follows the traffic to the NAT gateway. So now traffic is moving to the NAT gateway subnet. Now that when the traffic is moving to the NAT gateway server, the NAT gateway A is used a default route table in their gateway route table, performs the source IP address translation and then routes the traffic to the internet gateway. Right? And uh, from there the traffic is is moving, is going to the internet. So this is how your overall traffic of your what we call it um egress internet egress traffic workflow works right so if i design it oh, sorry um so your traffic like move like this uh it reaches here transit gateway it look for your um, you know this route table which is for appliance now the traffic is moving here transit gateway subnet from transit gateway subnets it's basically nothing it's an eni it looks for your VPC endpoint. The traffic moves to the VPC endpoint. Now, uh, now VPC endpoints move the traffic to the gateway load balancer. Gateway load balancer moves the traffic to the appliance. Appliance, after done, everything is done, then move it back to the gateway load balancer. And then gateway load balancer send it back to the uh, here endpoint. The endpoint is again looking for this route table, right? And then send it back to the NAT gateway, NAT. So NAT gateway again look for this particular route table, and then it send it back to the internet. It sent the, the traffic to the internet. So this is how the uh, traffic flow works. So your traffic <coughs> is going to be inspected by your firewall appliance. Okay. Okay. So now let's look at the return traffic. Uh, how the return traffic will looks like. So when the return traffic arrives. Um, at the internet gateway, right? So, um, since the since the NAT gateway a, had translated source IP address, the internet ga gateway routes the traffic back to the uh, NAT gateway only, right? Because NAT gateway do the NATing, and the source IP gets changed, get masked, right? And that is the uh, the benefit of NAT that it actually masks your original IP address, which is initiated from your workloads, right? So internet gateway return back the traffic to the NAT gateway, because that's that's the original source IP for internet. Now NAT gateway, when the traffic reaches here, now NAT gateway um, uh, looks for the route table, and it looks that uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, that, uh, the routing is saying um, towards the VPC endpoint, right? So it used the um, spoke one VPC network address route in NAT gateway, and the send the send the traffic to the uh, VPC endpoint or uh, 
gateway load balancer endpoint right for for both the range so so it will since, since the uh, traffic initiated from this ip range it will set it to vpc endpoint right here now what happened um when the traffic reaches here at the let me just zoom it more uh, at the vpc endpoint uh, what vpc endpoint will do it will use the aws private link and route the traffic to the gateway load balancer over the private network and again um, because the return traffic is also going to be inspected right um, so that if there are any anomalies or any threats it can be detected via the appliance using the gateway load balancer since the return traffic <coughs> or return packet is associated with an existing flow gateway load balancer encapsulate um, the original ip traffic with the gen v header and it forward it to the virtual appliance and then the virtual appliance behind the gateway load balancer again decapsulates the gen v header inspect the traffic and depending and depending on the security policy that you have configured here and then decide how to handle the traffic whether he wants to block it or deny it or allow it right so the <coughs> sorry on the next step is um assuming that here the traffic is allowed the virtual appliance then um re-encapsulate with the genevieve header and then it forward the traffic uh, to the gateway load balancer all right so gateway load balancer then um sends back sends the traffic or forward the traffic back to the uh, vpc endpoint here now vpc endpoint again check back the um, application route table or the appliance route table i'll see the uh, destined uh, the destinations of the packet is the 10.000/24 so it will send the packet to the transit gateway id so the traffic will be moving from here and it will go to the transit transit gateway ID, right it moved from the transit gateway <coughs> right so since um appliance vpc is attached is, is, is associated with the transit route table the transit gateway use the spoke one vpc network address route in the transit route table and send the traffic to the spoke one vpc <coughs> and finally once the traffic is at spoke one vpc the destination of the packet is within the vpc side range um, where the local routes because this route will work right it work it and is used to deliver the uh, traffic to the application instance that uh, uh, where the traffic was actually uh, you know initiated or this or the source of the traffic so this is how the uh, return traffic um, works so if i design it uh, let me so the traffic will move like this internet gateway and uh, internet gateway will move it to net nat gateway nat gateway will look, look at where to send the traffic so it send the traffic to um endpoint so it's in the traffic to endpoint and from endpoint again the traffic uh, the, the traffic or the packets will go for the inspection so it go to load balancer gateway load balancer go to appliance then it will check and send it back to load gateway load balancer and gateway load balancer send it back to <coughs> endpoint now endpoint after the uh, inspection is done the endpoint what it will look for uh, the route table and it send it back to the transit gateway because in the route table it is saying send it to the transit gateway if the destination of the uh, source packet ip is this right in the return traffic so it will go like that and since because this vpc is attached to this particular route table so it will be moving from here and um, since um, this particular route table is saying that if you want to go to this particular vpc spoke one vpc you can you can just take this attachment and uh, you can land it onto the vpc so it will take this attachment and it will be land onto this vpc now from this once the traffic is uh, 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 reached here in the spoke vpc it will then identify the local routes right the local routes and using the local route it will deliver this in this packet back to the workload right and this is how the return traffic flow looks like so the route table uh, plays a very important role here both in um, you know initiating the traffic towards internet and uh, from internet towards the 
back to the source now let's take a look at the east west traffic how we can inspect east west traffic east west traffic are considered to be the traffic which is flowing within your organization uh, for example um, communication or traffic flowing between your uh, vpc network let's say from spock vpc1 to spock vpc2 or from vice versa <clears throat> or maybe in another uh, vpc network so here um, um, let's say uh, your workload which is in spock vpc1 uh wants to communicate with workload which is a uh, deployed in spoke ppc2 then how uh then before uh traffic is sending to the final destination for to, to the to the application it should it should go to the security appliance for the inspection and once the inspection is verified and once inspection process is done then only the traffic should flow and uh, reach to your workloads which is in vpc2 so we have seen um, the egress traffic to the internet we have seen the return traffic now we are looking for the east west traffic again uh, your workload will send a traffic um, so here the default route table says for any ip or any range um, your the their request should flow to the transit gateway right so the transit gateway again have a two different route table <coughs> here uh, you will see that uh, for any uh, you know for for egress traffic whatever IP range uh, it could be uh, the IP range of your second VPC network that falls under this uh, range so you need to remember that if I say 0 0.0.0.0 all the CIDR range should cover under this under this uh, you know uh, CIDR range so for example uh, in my in my previous uh, or in my uh, uh, you know egress traffic workflow uh, when the workloads uh, try to communicate to the internet let's say on google.com the google.com has certain ip range certain public ip range which falls under this this particular range so similarly this particular ip range the spoke to vpc ip range should should be covered under this right because we are saying all traffic <coughs> all traffic includes the other other network as well so the traffic uh, is meant for this particular VPC network and, and it will reach here and depending on the route table the traffic will be moved forward to the uh, egress uh, um, or I would say security appliance VPC this is the VPC the traffic will reach here in the transit gateway subnet here and the transit gateway subnet again look for the route table it which says uh, for any traffic uh, uh, you know the next hop is going to be the uh, BPC endpoint or gateway load balancer endpoint. The traffic will land onto the gateway load balancer endpoint here. <clears throat> and again, from gateway load, uh, gateway load balancer endpoint, the traffic will uh, be uh, routing to the gateway load balancer using the private link. Uh, and, uh, and the gateway load balancer again uh, will do the encapsulations and uh, using the Geneva header, uh, it will uh, uh, use the header and forward it to the appliance firewall appliance for the inspection of the packets so once the appliance has done all the inspection um, then it send back the traffic to the gateway load balancer and then gateway load balancer again decapsulate and all those things uh, and uh, send it back to the gateway load balance load balancer endpoint right or ppc endpoint now vpc endpoint will not <coughs> forward uh, so okay so once the traffic will reach here now the uh, the vpc endpoint will look for the route table application route table or security appliance route table and see uh, the the uh, you know the destination ip range now the destination ip range is 10.0.1.0/24 right um, means this particular vpc range because this is the destination right and um, <clears throat> so whatever ip uh, that uh, this this workload assigned will will fall under this range right and since uh, this particular ip range uh, is saying that in the route table is saying that if you want to go to this particular uh, destination then you should go to the transit gateway id not the NAT, NAT gateway id right that's what i'm saying that you need to understand that this particular ip range has a lot of <clears throat> has everything covered but since this work on layer 3 and, and plus layer 4 uh, rules uh, so uh, this particular IP range um, is saying 
you should take a path of the transit gateway id so transit gateway id what it does it will uh, uh, move move this packet to transit gateway id and then it the packet will uh, reach here the transit gateway id it will look for the transit uh, route table the transit route table here um, for 10 0.1.0 slash 24 is attached is um, <coughs> is is uh, sorry i will send the traffic to this particular at attachment spoke to vpc and uh, the traffic will reaching um, to the spoke to vpc and here once the traffic reaches at this vpc it will look for the local route table and the local route table says uh, uh, the the local next hope and the traffic will be delivered to this particular workload right so this is how um, the easter traffic um, uh, flow works uh, let me let me draw let me draw a sketch here just a second so this is how the you know this send the traffic and this will look for this particular transit gateway uh, this particular route table the default route table says for transit gateway and it will come here and this particular at the transit gateway this is the egress route table which says if you want to go to any network you should go with the appliance uh, vpc attachment which is security vpc attachment so the traffic will land here and from here uh, it will check the route table of transit gateway route table subnets and it will send the traffic to the vpc uh, endpoint and from vpc endpoint to gateway load balancer gateway load balancer to appliance appliance to gateway load balancer and gateway load balancer back to the endpoint now endpoint will see uh, this particular destination ip range falls under this vpc range so the next hope is going to be the transit gateway id and then it will go to transit gateway this particular route table will forward the traffic using the um, attachment of spoke to vpc it will forward the traffic to a particular vpc and here it will look for uh, lo uh look for the um, vpc level route table where it says for local traffic um uh, and then the next stop is going to be the local vpc and this particular local vpc will send the traffic to this particular workload right so this is how the traffic has initiated from here it's getting inspector from the gateway load balancer via the appliance and then <clears throat> once everything is is fine based on the rules it allow the uh, traffic and then um, it uh, moves forward and um, uh, you know uh, reach to the final destinations of your second vpc network so this is how the east west traffic works the reverse the return traffic will also follow the same path <coughs> also follow the same path and reaches to the um, source ip right all right so one more thing that i would like to say here um, if you if for any reason let's say uh, <clears throat> uh, your appliance in one availability zone goes down then the gateway load balancer will automatically uh, forward your traffic to the next available zone where your appliance is deployed and your traffic will get it, will be served from this appliance so there is a high availability and gateway load balancer is continue to scale it based on the um, horizontal scaling or the scaling that you have configured <clears throat> so scaling is no challenge when you use the gateway load balancer and um, um, and uh, gateway load balancer uh, takes care of uh, of everything of uh, balancing the traffic or or diverting the traffic in case of uh, uh, anything uh, uh, or in, in case of fault tolerance or in case of any uh, uh, anything happens to your appliance right <clears throat>